Escape from Minecraft is the unreleased Minecraft adaptation of the popular survival FPS shooter Escape from Tarkov. It is being quote unquote developed by two young lads, Asterix, who seems to be the Sigma male, and another Thai individual, the name of which I cannot remember. I'll probably put it up in the video. As far as I know, both are from Thailand and because of that do not speak flawless English. But is it really what it seems? You may have noticed that I put developed in quotes, because quite honestly it just seems like they're stacking a bunch of public plugins on top of each other, along with some of their own models. There's nothing wrong with using public plugins, but they take the simple formula and stretch it out to be some monumental achievement. In short, there isn't a huge amount of original content, at least in what they've showcased so far. For example, the server uses Crackshot, more specifically, Crackshot Plus, which is a free standalone gun plugin that has a variety of half assed and overall janky features. In fact, the only original elements of any of their teasers and trailers I can find are their models and their map, which all have these Google Images high res textures. I'd bet if I looked up the name of an object from their server, I would instantly find the texture they use. To give them the benefit of the doubt, though, we can just say they're placeholder textures for now. Not only that, but they use these textures in combination with black color textures. For example, like gun models, creating this mixed art style that I personally find unappealing. Anyways, back to the point. I find it really strange that they've been developing this project for about two years now. According to the developers, I'll get to this later, even when one of the devs slash main contributors says they don't even have any sort of development portfolio, quite literally a standard, even something as simple as a GitHub profile. What makes this even stranger is that the same dev ignores a question about asking about his portfolio and responded to another question right after, even when he wasn't paying. This guy seems kinda unprofessional if you ask me. What makes the project itself suspicious though? Well, I think it's better if I show you and break down each part individually. Take notes, Minecraft devs. Able to customize different parts of the weapon. Initially, this is a cool feature. Visible attachments are not exactly the easiest thing to make since you have to consider so many permutations. However, it's not exactly the hardest, it's just a lot of manual labor, or you can write some code to do it for you. The big issue with this approach is you get zero flexibility to add, remove, or modify even a single attachment, you have to change it for every existing model and combination. This would take more development time than it's worth, and that's time you can put into other features. I would also like to add that weapon customization is one of the most crucial features of Escape from Tarkov, and I respect that the Minecraft devs are at least trying to emulate that feature in their product. Interrelated ammunition and armor systems. This just sounds like different bullets do different amounts of damage, and armor absorbs different amounts of damage. I'm not sure if Crackshot or Crackshot Plus handles that first one, but the second one can pretty much be done in vanilla. Gun hearing range. This is a slightly more advanced than existing offerings in Minecraft. What I assume this is, is that volume of audio can precisely be adjusted based on position. However, this is just as simple as doing some basic arithmetic. Realistic first person system. <laughs> this, this one deserves to read. Minecraft is first person by default, it's not hard to just put the arms into the model of the item that you're holding. Hell, I, I did this with one of my first resource packs when I was like 12. Game mechanics. Okay, this one's probably the worst offender. First of all, stamina isn't hard to make at all. It's a number that goes down as you perform actions. Not enough details are given on stamina system, so I mean, it's not really noteworthy. Hunger is a literally vanilla feature, I don't know what that's about. And thirst wouldn't be hard to make either since it's also a number that just goes straight down. Players can shoot their partners. This one I actually don't get because you can already do that and it isn't impressive at all. This would take more effort to make this not a feature, rather than keep it in. No name tag. Well, you can just put players on a team where they can't see name tags, you can already do that in vanilla. Player animations. Third person I doubt they would be able to do according to me and one of my child slaves. Um, I think they're talking about third person because that's what they've been showcasing, I'll probably put that up in the video. However, first person is very possible, but extremely tedious as you have to make each frame individually without a timeline. You know, like the thing you get in Blender. Minecraft isn't exactly built for that kind of stuff. Voice chat, purely in vanilla Minecraft, yeah, I doubt it honestly. Voice chat would require an external program either through a mod or a browser app. Yes, it's possible, but certainly not through only using the vanilla client as implied here. This one I'm gonna straight up call bullshit on. Because the only two plausible ways I can see this being done is they change the armor textures, which I don't even know if you can change the texture size of. 
or they change the Alex and Steve textures in the resource pack, which is very, very limited, but it's also likely since they claim that cracked accounts will be able to play, as seen in their uh, frequently asked questions chat. This image is pretty hard to read, like, Jesus Christ, it's like a schizo wrote it. Fully customizable in-game sound system, I don't know what they mean. Custom game shadow, I also don't know what this one means. 3D character and animation, um, yeah, show me and I'll believe you. Slope, I, ass I assume that means slope. Landscape, this one literally isn't hard, they're just retextured stairs, which is fine I guess, but it ain't that impressive. Game optimization system. I don't know what this one means either, but it, it would be funny if they just included a copy of Optify in the resource pack and told you to install it yourself. But the dev doesn't even recognize that Optify is an optimization mod, so there's that I guess. Also I don't think the dev knows how optimization works. This is just an orthographic shader. If you think you're the first ones to discover this, sorry, but plenty of people have already beaten you to this. 2D Minecraft feature. I would not be surprised if this is just here to inflate the features list, I'll be honest. Uh, I do not really see a point of a 2D view. In-game effect system. Time of being shot and falling. If falling means dying, I don't really see the point, but other than that, effects aren't really hard to make. I just find it funny that the blood effect on his leg cuts off randomly. This is quite a claim to have, again considering the seemingly lack of development experience alongside the fact that AI computation is definitely one of the more stressful parts of a server. Speaking of performance, they were trying to get a partner to get proper server hosting for their game mode. However, this is a pipe dream of most. This group is basically no ROI, since I'm not sure how much revenue a server host can make based solely off of 7 year olds buying Minecraft servers, and they don't even need servers that powerful anyways. Based on the gameplay they've shown so far, there seems to be basically no actual performance hogging mechanics. They've stripped out entities and AI. The most I can think of is shooting and pathfinding for the basic AI that you can see in the teasers. Following on from this, it's clear the developers really don't know exactly what they'll need. Here they claim they need 32 gigabytes of RAM for their server. However, anyone who has ran a server before will know this is incredibly unnecessary. A Minecraft server can usually handle around 12 gigs max if unmodded. And considering how like the plugin selection seems to be here, RAM definitely would not be the issue, it would be CPU most likely. Minecub is over 1500 members in their Discord at the time of recording, however it's very unlikely that you would have a demand that high on a single server. My estimate would probably be around 200 players peak, although that would probably inflate since they're using offline mode. In that case a higher performance server would only be beneficial in the department of a better CPU, and even then tactics like sharding or using a proxy like Waterfall can be used to lessen the load, although I suspect that their code doesn't allow cross-server data saving, so progress in one server won't persist in another if they use this approach. Also, they keep changing the amount of time they've been working on the project. Yeah, that's a bit suspicious to me, I'll be completely honest. If you're 90% done with your UI, then why are you still making concepts? That doesn't exactly make sense to me. I don't understand what maps creator means, since apparently their maps are listed as a separate entry. Why would you need a map creator in a survival based server? Wait, I haven't shown you their concept art yet? Alright, alright, let me, st let me stop the music for a second. You're gonna love what I have to show you. Alright, three, two, one, go! Yep, you're seeing that correctly. You cannot make this shit up. They copied the woods map from the EFT wiki, and yes, you are seeing that correctly. Those are the HECU soldiers from Half-Life 1. The first time I saw this, I bursted out laughing. I'll be honest. But don't worry guys, it's just a design. It looks pretty generic, and also very hard to implement a drop-down menu list well, considering Minecraft limitations. And the final nail in the coffin? Yeah, that's a bit suspicious, not gonna lie. A Kickstarter before you have anything noteworthy to show, or hell, even an ETA. Seriously? I mean, these are the same guys that put vanilla on in their screenshot teasers. Whatever that means. And it's not just these guys, I've seen many many scams similar to this one. Coincidentally enough, on Kickstarter. 
For example, the MMO game Raw. Uh, it's a long story, I'll probably put some text up on the screen to explain it. Sponsored video. This video is sponsored by me. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my second channel. Subscribe to my OnlyFans. Honey, you have to subscribe to these divorce papers. Alright, I'm done. So, do I think Minecraft is a scam? Before I give my final answer, let me explain my reasoning. First of all, I'm not saying anything is definite. However, I just find it strange that nobody is questioning the legitimacy of this project. In many such cases. The Minecraft devs have promised a lot of hard to implement features for a dev who seemingly has no experience publicly shown. Very easily implemented slash required features, even base game vanilla features. This whole project seems to be very poorly managed and unprofessional, to the point where they don't even have any sort of project planning or version control. No GitHub, no roadmap, the extent of it is an updates channel in the Discord. Either the devs lack the proper experience for a project like this, or there's no project to put on there and the whole thing was fabricated for a couple dollars and some YouTube subs. I'll let you decide which one is more likely, but either way it feels like their project is very incomplete, contrary to what the dev had to say about their own progress. I think it's really suspicious that they're setting up a Kickstarter without anything to show, and selling paid versions for some reason, and that they keep changing the amount of time that the project has been in development. Honestly, those, those are the three most suspicious things I've noticed, but that's just me. I do think this could very possibly just be their first project, and if this is the case, they should see this video as a critique of the work they've done thus far. This video isn't meant to bash the devs, it's just my analysis of a project that I think is a bit shady. One of the biggest issues I see with this project is simply the fact that very basic features are being advertised as groundbreaking new technologies, which has attracted a very young and impressionable fan base. It would be perfectly acceptable to build a project like this, combining a bunch of public plugins, making models, and simply stating, this is a combination of existing technologies on the market, but we've put them together to make a cool new product. They seem to have gone overboard though, claiming things such as block interaction are noteworthy features. However, this seems like a sign of incompetence rather than a straight up malice. In conclusion, I do not think Minecraft is an outright scam as of now, but it does seem to be heading in that direction. I do think it's very shady that the devs are attempting to advertise their server as groundbreaking when that simply isn't the case, and trying to profit off of it before release. I think they're taking advantage of an extremely young audience by falsely advertising most of the server's content, leading to heightened expectations. See, when server. It feels like a smaller No Man's Sky. Hopefully it follows more in uh, No Man's Sky's more recent footsteps rather than like its launch. In conclusion, I give Minecraft a defect 3 out of 10.